Well, Happy New Year. I'm Pastor Ed, and we are excited that we're starting a new year and a new sermon series called Honed. And uh, it kind of comes out of sec- uh, 1 Timothy 4, 7, where it talks about uh, training yourself to be godly. And uh, so I get to kick off this series. And, uh, you know, I had a friend when I was in uh, elementary school. His name was John. And I can remember a day when I invited him to come to church with me. And there was a special speaker that had come, uh, an evangelist who goes around the country and, and, and you know, shares the gospel and, and uh, invites people to join God in, in, in what he's doing. And so uh, I invited John to go and John came and he um, heard a message about heaven, about hell. And I remember just sitting there at the invitation, he actually went forward and uh, prayed a prayer to receive Jesus. And um, if you were to talk to John today, um, he believes in God, he believes in Jesus, that he died, that he rose again, and that he uh, is one who is, is risen as a, as a savior. Uh, he believes a lot of things like that. But you know what I don't see? I don't see a lot of fruit. I don't see somebody who is obeying God on a day-to-day basis. And I see a lot of just John. I have another friend. His name is Rick. And uh, much later in life, he uh, came to a place where he made a decision for Jesus. If he, uh, in his earlier years, if he thought about, um, you know, a believer, he would call him a Bible thumper. He was not really interested in knowing much about them, he he was just kind of turned off by the whole deal. Um, interesting enough, he married somebody who was a follower of Jesus, and she patiently prayed for him, didn't try to, you know, arm wrestle him to that, wouldn't have done any good. Um, but uh, the Holy Spirit was at work in his life through the years. And uh, one Sunday morning, he woke up, and the Spirit just... Um, prompted him to go to church and he he responded he he came to church and uh, a, a, a short time later he received Christ and he re- received the uh, the a a uh, and made a decision to be a committed follower of Jesus and I have seen fruit in his life I see a, a man who is obedient to the response of God and I see um, just the evidence of Jesus Christ in him. John is a good, a good man, um, but he prayed a prayer to, uh, to go to heaven. Rick is another good man, but he, I see Christ exuding and a growth of, uh, of Christ in him. But he had prayed a, a, a similar prayer, but he really prayed a prayer that he might be a follower of Jesus. Do you see the difference? I believe there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people who have, uh, who believe all the truths about Jesus and uh, have prayed the prayer, but are they really followers of Jesus? And I really think that, you know, when you think about Jesus who showed up on earth um, in a place where religion was strong in the culture that he was in, the, you know, you think about the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees and all the religious uh rulers and and leaders that Jesus grew up in and when he started his ministry he um you know it was it was pretty interesting cuz these men of god everyone that would say these are men of god who knew the scriptures they had memorized they had studied they they knew the law they knew everything about god but when god came up and showed up in their presence they did not recognize him and i believe that um, there's a lot of people who, who would live a godly life in a sense where they do godly things like they would say, well, I go to church, I am a good neighbor, I give money to, the, to God, I, um, you know, I read my Bible, I pray. But are you more of a fan or are you a follower of Jesus? Are you, did you pray the prayer? I mean, think about your, when you came into this journey to, to begin with, were you more about the, um, you know, the praying that you would go to heaven? Or have you committed to pray 
a prayer that you say, I am going to be a follower of Jesus. I'm going to obey him. He's going to be my master. And so where, where did you start and how has your journey brought you to the place where you're at? You know, when we define what a disciple is, we would def- define them as somebody who is following Jesus. Following Jesus means that you have a personal relationship with Jesus, that you have, um, that you're reading and you're, you're, you're listening and you're trying to follow him in a way that um, is a meaningful way. And if that's true about you, then your, your life is going to be changed. Um, you're going to take on the fruit of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, and, and, and so on. And, uh, and people around you are going to see the characteristics of Christ in you. And as a result, also, you're going to be on mission. You're going to be uh, sharing your faith. They're going to be, um, you're going to be compassionate about those around you and making sure that those around you know the truth of salvation. We're looking in 2 Peter this morning, uh, verse 1, and I just want to draw out some of the realities of this life uh, of walking with Christ. And it says here, his divine power. And I want you to really think about uh, that whole idea, his divine power. And this is talking about Jesus, God, um, and what we, um, what we have in a relation with him. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Think about that. He has given us everything that we need in this God, uh, to, for a godly life through knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness, through the knowledge of him. And not just the intellectual knowledge, just not knowing about him, but really knowing him. But his power, his divine power has given us everything. And I, I think it's, uh, it, it, when you think about this, what is the everything? And there's, I mean, you could begin to, uh, a large list, but I think really what uh, Peter is trying to bring out here to the persecuted church that he's writing to is that um, they have the power of God, the Holy Spirit that uh, there is this opportunity to, to experience that. I, I think about gifts, and I know many of you have just um, <laughs> uh, had maybe the gift that you wanted or was maybe disappointed in the gift you got, but we just had the gift-giving time of Christmas. And I can remember a gift um, that I had as a, as a child, and uh, it was an erector set. And I love putting things together. And so my parents, it was, it was a great gift. And so I began to put that stuff together. And then there was this part of it that, um, that would need, um, uh, you know, you could make some motorized op- uh, movements and all that kind of things. And, uh, uh, but, uh, but what happened, the gift did not include the batteries. So I can remember Christmas Day, I, I'm building some things and I'm kind of making cranes work and stuff. And I go, man, I really would like to, to investigate all the things that I can do with this if I just had the batteries. In those days, everything was closed. We were distance from town. So it took several days before I could get the batteries to operate. And then I could it, it, it enjoy the gift of, uh, of what, what was given to me. And I just want to say that when we receive Christ, and everything that we have, batteries are included. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has come to live in us, and that is the power source of our life. And that is so critical. I think in, if, you know, um, somebody who is more religious, like the Pharisees, they were living in the power of their own way. They were not living in the power of God. And we've been given that gift. And I think a lot of Christians are kind of like, um, why is the Christian life so hard? You know, I've got news for you. The Christian life isn't hard. The Christian life is impossible. There's, there's no way. I mean, this car is trying to be pushed uphill. It's hard enough to push something downhill like this. There's a motor in this. There's fuel that's needed. And... It's it's funny, but it seems like we often just kind of are trying to push ourselves along, and we're not aware of what has been given in the gift of the Holy Spirit that wants to wants us to be in the in, uh, in the vehicle, experience it in the power, and not us on the outside trying to do what the Spirit has been designed to do. We also see that 
in this passage, through these, he has given us even every great and precious promise. And I think of the fact that we have God's word. Everything has been included in this gift that we have God's word. And, oh, the truths of, of God's word are immense. And there is power. And, you know, it talks about the word of God being powerful. And, it, and as you read the scriptures, how does it come alive? And how does it work in you in powerful ways? And, you know, uh, that is a, uh, as I've learned to spend time in God's word, to meditate on, on God's word, uh, there's something powerful in it. If we just have the scriptures that are um, that are in the book and we are reading, that's a good thing, this place to start. But learn how to how to read it in such a way, put it into memory so you can meditate on it. I like to read the scriptures where I read it over and over. I take a passage of scripture and read it for for 30 days. That way, I'm beginning to get it into my mind. And it's, it's not just spending time in God's word, but God's word spending time in you. And you will be surprised at the power that God brings in your life and gives clarity in the days and the moments you need it. it you don't have to run and go, where was that found in the Bible? It's, it's found in you. So there's power in the gift and the, the divine power that we have received. Also, it says in, in uh, verse 4, through these things we have given uh, us great and, and every great and precious promise so that through them, so uh, you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So that we also have the opportunity to participate. Not only do we receive the divine nature, but we also are divine power, but we also participate in the divine nature. Let me unpack that for you. When we place our faith in Christ, when we receive the gift, when, when we ask Christ to, um, uh, to come into our lives, when, when, we, when we decide to be a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit makes his home there. And the word of God becomes a powerful tool as we get a intimate relationship with, uh, with God. At that time, you now have a new father. You are now, as it says, you are now adopted. You are now uh, able to be in a relationship with a new father. And your char- the characteristics of who you are is holy, righteous. You, you're, uh, the characteristic of, of, of Jesus and the father was he was obedient. And we can list, I mean, the, that characteristic, this is just a very short list. We could go on and on and on about the characteristics of this, this heavenly father. But I want to just take a moment and say, we have been, we've been adopted. We have been adopted into a family uh, and we have a new father. And I, I, I don't think sometimes we're aware of the power of that idea. I I grew up in a in a home where my dad and mom um, stayed together, and we have um, you know uh, lived in a in a in a very uh, peaceful home where things all seem to kind of go as it appeared they should be. But so many of us have experienced the brokenness of home. Uh, some have uh, been adopted, and in those situations, sometimes we see how. Kids just meld so well into a loving family who cares for them, and they they take on the characteristics of that home, and they experience the love, they experience the the joy of that home. They begin to uh, function and take on the characteristics of the of of that family, and they and as they grow and mature, you would never know that they were not a biological child. And that child is grows to uh, to, to incredible um, things, and and they have overcome the the troubles and the the things of a of of their previous um, relationship or or loss. But um, but I think when you think about being adopted, um, I think it's a powerful thing that we have a father 
and we and he is our and that and that relationship that we have there's but i also want you to know in this idea that um you know this whole idea of having escaped the corruption in this world caused by the evil desires and where does that evil desire i mean you you know you would love for it to be that we were in such a way that um that everything that we um uh, that, that we that it would just come so easy and i think about you know that i think about an apple tree the most natural thing for an apple tree to do is bear apples the most unnatural thing for it to do is is to die and 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 be fruitless and it's the most natural thing as somebody who is a follower of jesus and is truly seeking after god is to bear fruit and to bear fruit to the to the adopted family of that father but but so many um, of us struggle. And why do we struggle? Because we also have this nature of Satan who is also our father. And that's why we, were, we have left that family and now we've come into the family of a, a new heavenly father. And the characteristics that we are dealing with is that we, our father Satan was, was a liar. He was a deceiver. He was disobedient. He was, uh, he's a murderer. Um, I, if you want to, if you want to see who Satan is, just you know, turn on the TV and watch the riots and everything that goes on around in our in our world right now. It just makes no sense, and 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 they're just hell bent for for evil, and that's the characteristic of our father, who was Satan. And so we have these two family characteristics that live within us. And so Peter kind of begins to break it down into this and, uh, and talks about this in, in, uh, in the verses to follow. He says, for this reason, make every effort. For this reason, make every effort. Now, and I want you to just pause here for a moment and say, don't just get behind the car and start pushing again. Make every effort. Remember, in the nature of your father, you have the power through the spirit, through the word. So take that. And he says, add to your faith goodness and to the goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. So quite a list. And so you, the, the idea is that you're going to add. So you already have everything but the idea of adding is to make it not just the gift that you've been, been given, but how do you begin to see that played out in a day-to-day walk with God? And so here's the list. So faith. So he starts with, start with faith. You entered into this relationship with, with God by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest we should boast about it. So faith, faith is the entrance in, and faith is the day-to-day walk with Jesus that helps us to, uh, to become all that God wants us to be. You can't do it in any other way but faith. So faith is the foundation. Faith is the starting point, and faith is the day-to-day walk with God, believing by faith that he is up to, uh, and he will guide you into where he wants you to go. Goodness. Goodness is honorable character. I would think, in one word, I, I think of integrity, that you're a person who is honest, that, that is trustworthy, that keeps your word, that, um, that uh, is, is transparent, is, and is somebody that um, is, 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 just, is good, but is good from the characteristics of what God has. Uh, knowledge. First thing that often we think about when we think of knowledge is intellectual uh, understanding or intellectual information. And, uh, but I believe what really is, uh, is important to think about when you think about knowledge is, is that you know God. You know, there's a, you, you can know, you can have knowledge about God, uh, as I've shared with, with John. I'm not sure John knows God. You know, I, I met my wife um, and um, and I knew her, I knew about her, um, as her grandmother shared some stories about her. And then I met her. And then over the time we began to date and, and, um, and as I have 
known Robin now for almost 40 years. I know her. I started knowing about her and now I know her. And, and so there's just, there's this knowledge that I know about God, but do you really know God? God knows you, but do you know God? And he has this great desire for you to know him um, and that for him to be known by you. So uh, knowledge, experiencing God, self-control is a handling pressures of life. Um, you know, uh, saying no, being able to uh, uh, know when to say, uh, you know, uh, yes, and when to say no, you know, paying attention to your appetites, paying attention to um, your emotions. Are you are you aware of what's going on and being able to respond to it? It's it's often can be handling pressures of life. And then there is perseverance. Um, uh, excuse me, handling the, handling the, the pressures would, would be perseverance, handling the pleasures would be self-control, but uh, perseverance, knowing not uh, when to, to, to hold on and, and hold fast, not giving up, not giving in, and of course, um, life, and especially life with God, takes great perseverance. We look at the life of Paul, we look at life of any follower of God, and we've seen how you have to persevere and the power of God is so greatly involved because if you don't, you will find yourself struggling. On More on the list was uh, godliness, just being a follower of Jesus, somebody who is, um, is hearing and in this relationship and becoming more like Jesus. Um, as, a, as a follower of Jesus, you're, you're beginning to, to take on the fruits of the Spirit, um, Love, joy, peace, gentleness, patience, and that's becoming the characteristics of of how you live and how you deal with people and how you deal with challenges and how you deal with trouble and uh, but still being able to um, to overcome. I, I can say that um, during this pandemic, uh, it's been really challenging for me to to just on a day to day basis, as it has been for all of us. And I can think of you know even when. Um, we were having to make some hard decisions and knowing what to do and, and how to lead through this time when we were asked to, to shut things down. And so, um, and I can remember just the, the anxiety and the, and that I would wake up to every day, but every day I would, I would find the peace of God. Um, and that relationship became so, so pe- special. And so learning how to live in the, the reality and, and the gift of, of, the, of the fruit of the spirit. Mutual affection is, is that, that loving one another, caring for others, and uh, that then comes to, to love. And so add to this lifestyle where you, the end product is, is, um, is sacrificing for one another, is unconditional love and, uh, and, and learning how to just grow. And so this, this is the character, char- characteristic. It's not necessarily that one precedes the, the other. These are areas that God is at work as we continue to walk in a relationship with him, following him, abiding in him, uh, living out this daily walk with him. The verses go on and talks about, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. Your knowledge of our Lord, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the, the, what, what God is really up to in this relationship with, with you is not just that you would be saved and then um, live happily ever after until heaven or kind of make this work on your own till heaven. It's that you would live a productive life. I don't know what you think about um, how how uh, how important that is to you. Are you are you walking in such a way that that you want to be effective and productive in your daily life? And and I will just kind of consume that in a way, or that you know, simplify that to be: Are you fruitful? Is is your life a fruitful life, or? It says, but whoever does not have this is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. And I, when I think about that, I think of they have forgotten that they have a heavenly father that they've been adopted into, and they're still maybe um, 
not realizing that they have these two natures at work and they're getting pulled back. If you're not driving forward into um, the, the the nature with the father, that your your adopted father, then you have a tendency to get lost in a, in a in a way that um, you just get stuck. Many many people just get stuck in their journey. Well, I think you know as we process what P, what Peter's trying to express to the church. Um, Jesus modeled this. I think uh, when you look at at how Jesus lived his life, we hear, we watch, um, you know, his methods. We study his his message. We we study his word. Uh, but what did Jesus? How did he actually live? And I think when you kind of step back and look at a day to day experience. That God that 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 the Father had with Jesus, it's pretty powerful, and I think it's I think it's helpful as we look at how are we going to live out what Peter's talking about here. And so I want to just go to the relationship with Jesus, and and the Gospel of John is 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 the uh, the gospel that really talks about that that personal uh, relationship with the Father, and starts in in um, in John chapter five, and and where this context of this particular verse is. As these religious, these these fans of God, these uh, Pharisees are coming to Jesus and, and questioning who He is and and saying you can't be of God and you're a liar and on and on and on and it they were beginning their their plan to to kill Him and Jesus is 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 um, is expressing to them what is true and I just want to walk through um, Jesus's just claiming and how what he says about his relationship with the father he says the son can do nothing by himself he only can do what he sees the father doing in john 5:19 by myself i can do nothing 5:30 the works that the father has given me to to finish the very works i am doing john 5:36 i do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me, 828. This is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Now I want you to think about this. This is God in the flesh. This is, this is God who has uh, who has come down in the form of a uh, a baby, is now living with them as we celebrate a Christmas, God with us is now living in this, rela- in this relationship with mankind, putting on human flesh, but still is all God. But if, if God in the flesh found it so critically important that he would daily have a relationship with the Father and be in such a way that he would do nothing and, and understand that nothing he could do could be done just in himself, but it needed to be done in harmony in a relationship with the Father, um, then what does that say about us and the way that we walk? Now, Jesus goes on. Now, when he is getting ready to, uh, to go away in John 14, he begins to express what this should look like for his disciples who have been walking with him day to day. They've seen him do the, the miracles that only God could do. They could see him heal the, the sick and walk on water and, and raise the dead, all those kind of things. And Jesus said, I'm going away, but something better is coming. And this is um, what he says in John 14. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate another one to come alongside you, another counselor, another one to, um, to stand and defend you against the evil one, to help you and to be with you forever. This spirit of truth, this Holy Spirit of truth, you, you will know him for he right now lives in you, uh, with you and will live in you. And he was really looking at what would happen in, in Acts Two, when the Spirit of God came and ignited that early church and how it began to blossom and grow. But there was this Spirit that was going to come, and this relationship was going to be similar to what the Father and the Son had experienced. Now, Jesus is going to heaven, and on a day-to-day basis, when we receive Christ, the Spirit of God comes in, and now we have the same relationship with God the Father as Jesus did when he was here on earth. He goes on and says, 
Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and will come to them and make his, our home with them. Our home, God, Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are all there. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. One more. And I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, as I, um, as I look at this, I, I realize that, uh, that God is at work in a powerful way in us, that we have the opportunity to have a relationship with God that is powerful with the Holy Spirit living in us, and it's, it's, we have everything we need, batteries included, to be a follower of Jesus, and that God is at work and has great desire that we would be at work in his, in his, uh, in his kingdom, that we would be changed, we would be following Jesus, that we would be changed by Jesus, and that we would be mission, on mission with Jesus. There's one more that he says, this is my Father's glory. This is what he desires. This is what is really important, that you bear much fruit and show yourselves to be my disciples. So I question, have you invited Jesus into your life? Have you made that decision that you want to be a follower of Jesus? Or have you prayed a prayer that one day you would go to heaven and you're just waiting one day to, and, and just living for yourself until that day? And Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, not everyone that says they're a follower of Jesus, not everyone that's prayed the prayer will see my kingdom. But those who do what I say, those who are obedient, those who will follow. And this series, Home, it's got a, an image of, a, uh, of an anvil. And we're looking to put you on the anvil. We want you to, to evaluate yourself and put yourself under some training so that you will walk in obedience, walk in the spirit. And I just want to lay the, the foundation that as you begin to, uh, to evaluate and as we challenge you in your Bible reading, as we challenge you in a, a time of solitude, as we challenge you to be, um, uh, you know, taking the, the rest to, to reflect and, and as, you, as we challenge you to, to be engaged in community and all the things that, that is coming over the next few weeks, I just want you to do that, not in a way that you would be like the Pharisees, that you would be pushing the car, but that you would be realizing that you're, this is God's glory. This is, this is what he's up to. This is what he wants you to do is to, to be shaped, to be honed, to grow. Uh, where you would have impact personally and that it would make an impact around the world. You know, I, I think about, you know, the, the end. Uh, if everyone were to daily be a follower of Jesus in this relationship with God and as they listen to God and they would respond and then they would obey on a day-to-day -day basis. And the result of that was a growth in the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and, and the, 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 the calling of, of where God wants me to serve and how he wants me to function in my family, in my neighborhood, in my church, and around the world. Um, what that would be if, if you, what would, that, what would that look like in your life and how would that impact your world? And what would it look like if everyone at Family Church were on that, uh, living in that way of a day-to-day -day walk with Jesus and being able to hear the voice of God and respond just as Jesus did? I do nothing of myself, only what the Father has told me. I would love to see what that, uh, what that would look like 
And I look, I anticipate what that looks like as we continue to walk through this series. And I, and I, I, I pray for you that you will be challenged to step away from being a fan and to step into being a true follower of Jesus. I'm going to release to the campuses and God bless you.